Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and I have decided that this year I am going to attempt to do Junk Journal July. It is hosted by Meg Journals. I'll put her link in the description box below, as well as a link to the prompts before I get started in the prompts and I am behind. So this video is going to be rather long because I'm doing what I can to get caught up. Today is already the fifth and I hadn't started. So to begin, I am making a journal. I do have several other things that I could use for this, but I wanted to try something different. So I am making a half letter size disc bound journal. You see, what you see here is me trimming down some vellum that I had printed previously for something else and I didn't use it. So I am just prepping it to make the covers. The one with the peach colored roses is from my She Blooms collection at Journal Life's Journey. This piece that I'm using here, which will be the back, I believe is from Artie Mays. It has numbers and it's got like a grungy look to it. So those are the two pieces of vellum that I am going to be using. And I'm also going to try and keep most of this video in real time, which again is going to account for the length of it because I'm basically doing three videos in one. So this first part again is me working on the covers. So I wanted that translucent to clear look for the covers. That's why I'm using the vellum. Now here I discover that because the floral vellum wasn't printed all the way to the edge and because of the orientation of the way that I had to cut it, it is not tall enough for what I need. So I'm auditioning, as they say, pieces of the cutoff from the vellum that I'm using. I don't like the way that looks, so I reached for some new washi tape that I have from Lauren Phelps Designs, and I'm just gonna make up the difference at the bottom with a piece of this washi tape. I know it's gonna seem strange, but this is a quote unquote junk journal. So I figured me patching it up with washi tape could work, so that's what I did. So I just lined it up with the back piece and added the washi tape. And here I'm just trimming off the ends. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it in a laminate pouch. This is a five mil pouch. And I'm just going to press down that tape and run it through. So when it came out, I put two paper pads on top of it. They are actually paper pads that I'm working on a project with for Christmas in July. So that's a little sneak peek. I also noticed that because the vellum isn't thick like cardstock, the cover seemed a little flimsy. So I am going to laminate again. I put it in another five mil pouch and I'm gonna run these covers through again so I'm using a double pouch now this doesn't always turn out great in this instance I got air bubbles so I'm going to take the craft knife and poke a hole in the air bubbles and try running it through again sometimes this works to repair the air bubbles this time it worked some, but it didn't really work that great. When I do the double laminate, usually I'll either get cloudiness or air bubbles. And I think the air bubbles come because the original laminated piece is not completely flat. So here you see me using the bone folder trying to rub out the remaining air bubbles and it's not working. They're just gonna be seen. So I'm gonna move on and try to live with it. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to put up with the air bubbles and still have a sturdy cover. When I ran the back piece through the second time, it had a few air bubbles, but they were not as noticeable as the ones on the front cover. So here I'm just trimming off the excess laminate and I'm going to take my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper 
and round the corners. I'm using the one quarter inch rounder. I did not initially round the vellum, but I am rounding the corners of the laminate because they are very sharp especially since I did the double laminate that made them extra sharp so once I round the corners I'm running it back through in the other direction to try to help flatten it and get some of the wrinkles out and again hoping that those air bubbles would close up so I'm going to use my arc punch the arc punch is from Staples it's a heavy duty punch to punch the covers I do have to kind of turn one end up a little bit so that it doesn't get so it doesn't get punched because the covers are a little taller sometimes uh, one edge or the other may get a little punch in it so I curl up the ends so that that doesn't happen here I just marked the back piece with a marker so that the holes would be in the same location as the front because I couldn't do them both at the same time. So I've punched my holes or my mushroom holes and I had some discs that I had not used. Again, this is a, like a, a Mod Podge of things. I would prefer clear discs, but I don't have any on hand. So I'm gonna use these bluish translucent discs which don't match anything on the cover, but they're just gonna have to work. I do have some smaller discs that would probably work better for the coloring, but because I know that this is gonna bulk up over time, I figured I might as well start with the bigger discs. So this is where we are. So this is the cover that I'm gonna be using. Now I have this stack of misprint or test print inserts and most of this I believe is on 32 pound paper. I had it in the queue ready to be coffee or tea stained. So I just grabbed a stack that I'm going to use to make the pages for this junk journal. These will be in my base pages. So I'm going to go to my heavy duty paper trimmer and cut these in half. So I cut them in half and I don't know what happened to that footage when I came back, but I've already started punching them with the arc punch. So I'm just going through the stack and it doesn't matter which direction they're going or anything like that. I'm just punching them. And I decided not to do a bunch of different style papers because I'll mostly be doing collage things here and I can always tip in or add in a piece of pattern cardstock if I want something different or a piece of coffee or tea stained paper or any other types type papers I could even add in junk mail so that was another reason why I wanted to try it with the discs just to see how it goes so I'm going to go ahead and add the papers on the disc Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm still trying to rub out those air bubbles, but the air bubbles are not as noticeable now that the papers are in the journal. So now I did make it a little wider to allow room for tabs. So I had this file folder that was just laying around. I'd scored it incorrectly when I was trying to make a folio, so, but I didn't wanna just throw it away because I felt like I could use it for something else and now it's coming in handy. So I've marked where I need to trim it and I'm gonna trim off the piece with the tab on it. It already is folded, so it will have a pocket all I need to do is punch it and add it to the journal. Now I did cut it a little wide, so the tab is gonna stick out a bit, but I decided not to go back and adjust it because if I stop when something isn't perfect, then I will never <laughs> finish anything. So I just kept it the way it is. And you can see here, when I put it on the discs and close the journal, which is pretty tight trying to close it right now, it hangs out just a hair, but I think I can live with that. And if I decorate it, the tab just right, and by the time I add other tabs and other things, 
uh, it probably won't even be noticeable here I am twisting the disc a little trick that I saw over at Kell of a plan to help the pages turn easier so now I'm going to start on day one for day one the prompt is begin so I'm going to start out with stamping the word begin using some alpha stamps. I think these are from Tuesday morning a while ago. So I'm just going to spell out the word begin on this scrap paper. Over to the right, I have a pile of scrap papers from projects that I've worked on or am currently working on. So for the first few days of Junk Journal July, I'll be pulling from those scraps. Here, I'm just, again, stamping out the word begin. I'm having a little issue with getting the letter straight, but this does not have to be perfect. What happens is I do not like the way the N looks on top of the printing that was already on this paper, on this scrap. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I can just hold all the stamps at one time and stamp all the letters at one time. So I am going to restamp this using that method. I'm inking it up and I'm just gonna grab another scrap and stamp the whole word at once. And I decided to do it on this scrap piece of book page. So here I'm just stamping off the stamps and I'll deal with cleaning those later. This is the result. So that's part one of what I wanted to put on day one. Then I have these clickable alpha stamps. With these, you can take them apart and click them back together to make any word you want. I have different fonts here. I also have some numbers. I decide I'm going to use the turquoise green version. It has a typewriter font. And I'm going to use this to stamp out the words Junk Journal July. And I'm also using uh, archival ink in black. And this is just another scrap from the pile that I'm using to stamp the words on. So all three words are stamped. I'm gonna put the alpha stamps away and next I'll be tearing apart the three words. On this piece of scrap paper, I'm going to stamp out the year 2022 with the woodblock stamps. And the, t the first two didn't stamp well, so I just moved over and started the process again. Then I have another scrap piece here that I'm gonna stamp one on. I'm not sure that I'm gonna put the day number on each journal page, but I stamped out the one just in case. 
Okay, so now here we are ready to work on the first prompt again, that is begin. I took out the first sheet of paper in the journal and I'm gonna use that. I have this image here um, that is copyright free from the National Museums. And so I'm gonna use that. I had it in my stash for another project and I didn't use it. So I just trimmed that down and then I decided that I wanted to cover the holes. And I'll probably do this a lot with the pages that I do in this journal. I think it's a good thing to do because it does create a more sturdy area for those punches. So I just took half a piece of coffee or tea stained paper and then I'm folding that half a piece in half after I tore the straight edge off the side. And I'm going to use glue stick, a scotch glue stick, to adhere it to the side where the punches are. Now you may be saying, well, why did you punch the paper if you were gonna cover up the holes? Well, I want the paper in the journal so that it can be held together. But in some instances, I feel like those punches need to be reinforced. So that's what I'm doing with this. And it also becomes part of the page design as well. I put glue on one half of the piece that I tore. And I'm just folding it up a little bit so that I can see where that line is. And I'm pacing the side with the punches up against the fold. And just lining that up. And then I realized that the tea stained paper is a little bit shorter than eight and a half, but I'll fix that in a moment. I'm just gonna add glue to the other half and then fold it over. This is easier than just trying to put the whole piece full of glue and position it. I just put on half and then do the other half. It makes it a lot easier. So here I'm just smoothing out the glue, making sure that it's adhered well. And I'm using a Cricut knockoff scraper from Dollar Tree to again, make sure that this piece of paper is adhered well. This is not a heavyweight piece of paper. I think it's probably 20, 24 pound paper. So in an effort to cover the little gap that uh, the coffee or tea stained paper left. I tore off a another piece and I'm just going to tear that down to size and let it wrap around to cover that empty white space. Now I am ready to deal with the white space on the other side of the page. I'm gonna use my favorite script stamp and I'm using this scrap paper as a mask. I probably should have stamped the white paper first, but I didn't think of that. So I'm doing it now. And that's why I have the mask there so that the script does not get on the coffee or tea stained paper. And I'm putting my mat down so that the archival ink does not get on my desk. And I, I intended to stamp around the edges lightly, uh, but that archival ink was a little stronger than I thought. And so it kind of <laughs> was a little more powerful, more intense, but that's okay. We're gonna work around it. And I'm just adjusting my mask to make sure that I don't stamp on the coffee paper. And then I turned it over and cleaned my stamp off on the back page. Here I am again auditioning pieces, trying to figure out placement and how I want things to be placed. I had somewhat of an idea of what I wanted to use. I have these floral die cuts that are dark florals that I cut several years ago and never could find a use for so I'm using them here 
and the other pieces that I stamped will be part of the layout. I am tearing down some of the excess off of the Junk Journal July so that it can fit the space better. And then I'm going to use this off cut from the vellum to add a little more interest in the background. And I'm just going to use the glue stick to adhere that. Here I'm doing more positioning, deciding where different elements will go, what elements I will include. There's a lot of that in doing this for me. I could probably go on with this for hours of just trying different things, but for Junk Journal July, I'm going to make it a point to try to commit early <laughs> and not just keep trying things. So now that I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do, I'm going to add a little bit more to the background. I have a black paint spray here that I'm spraying in my little container and a fan brush to add splatters to the background. The paint spray was a little light, so I added in a little drop of acrylic paint to that and taking the fan brush again to add the sprinkles in the background. Here I have some gold ink and I'm going to do the same thing with the gold ink. Just another layer in building my background. And I will try to link to all the supplies that I use in this video that I can. They will be in the description box below. Here I'm just taking the fan brush with the leftover gold ink on it and going around the edge of the paper. This creates somewhat of a frame and gives it a little bling, a little sparkle. Here I'm just going over it with the heating tool to make sure everything is dry. And now I'm going to start by adding the focal point and the other elements and designing the page. So I put the glue on the photo and then I just thought it needs to be mounted on something. So I grabbed a piece of packaging paper from the pile of scraps. And at first I decided to tear off the excess, but it wasn't giving me a good tear. This paper is really, really thin. And with the glue stick, it made it difficult to tear. So I decided to just go in and cut it off. It has like a bit of a ragged edge anyway on the other side. So I think it'll be fine just the way it is. And I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the back of that and add it to the page. So 
So here I'm playing with the positioning of Junk Journal July. And adjusting the 2022 and gluing those stamped pieces in place. And I felt like it was a little too neutral and needed a little more color. This scrap is a very light green color that I felt would complement the greenery in the florals. So I'm just adding a couple of pieces of this scrap to accent there. And here I messed up and <laughs> got the scrap stuck to my glue sheet, but I'm gonna use it anyway. And if you notice, I don't know, if you watch my other channel, Journal Life's Journey, I use a lot of inking, distress inks. But on this project, I tried not to use any of that. I think I've gotten to where the inking is has become a crutch. So I want to try and work without so much inking. Not saying I won't use it for Junk Journal July. I'm just not using it right now. So this is day one, done. I'm gonna turn it over and start on day two. The prompt for day two is reinvent. So I'm gonna reinvent <laughs> this paper doll and some scraps. So this is one of the dolls that I cut when I did my Juneteenth doll. Um, this is just a smaller version. So I had one facing each way. I decided to use the one that faces right. And I am going to use this marker to go over and just create a full silhouette. When I printed it, it was a dark brown color and you could see the facial features and the hair and everything. But I just want this to be a complete silhouette. So I'm using the marker to fill it in. And I also use that marker to go around the edges so that you wouldn't see the white core of the paper. So here you can see the difference in the two dolls. So I'm just playing around with positioning, seeing how she is going to fit and deciding what other elements I'm gonna add to the page. This is a, a little box of scrap pieces that I used a method, I think, by Louise Han Heinzel here on YouTube. Um, to, and I think I saw someone else do it recently. Where you just take the scraps, you put them in a container, and you use your ink sprays, your glitter sprays, uh, splash paint, all different types of things on those scraps. And you kind of jumble them up, and you get really cool colors and treatment of the papers and they make great little tidbits that you can use for other projects. This piece here is actually a mop-up page because when I was doing those sprayed pieces I accidentally spilled the brown spray so I used this page to mop it up and now I'm going to use it as part of this layout. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these pieces down. And I'm not too worried about the printing in the background. I think in the end, most of it is covered, but even if it wasn't, it would just act as another design in the background. So I'm adding the painted papers, the mop-up papers.
initially I was going to use those mop up papers to make envelopes but this is another great use for them as well here's another mop up page that I used when I was making my own acrylic sprays and starting my mini art journal you can check out that video on my other channel at journal life's journey I'll link to it in the iCard up above but I'm just going to take a little bit of this mop up page because a I feel like this page again needs some color and I think it's going to need some color to complement what I plan to do for her dress. And this is another example of reinvent. These are just scrap papers that were mop up pages, just picking up extra paint or whatever the case may be. And now I am giving them a new purpose, reinventing them for a new use. And as I talk about when planning, even when you have elements that don't really match, if you put it in more than one place in your layout, then it will tie them in together. Usually you wanna put two to three. Three is the best number, but in this case, because of space, and design layout I'm using two so I've got two of the browns and then I've got two of the colorful and the tea stain kind of pulls in with the brown the white kind of pulls in with the other colored pieces okay so now we got our focal point to work on I'm back with my scraps and I think the one person that I saw do this called them happy scraps it might have been 49 dragons flies I don't know but I'll link to Louise Heinzel video in the description box below if you want to check it out I'm gonna give her a top a bodice uh, when I did this before I used a doily I didn't want to use the same thing so I'm using a scrap of the mop-up page and again that'll help tie in the colored mop-up page pieces that I used in the background and I just kind of wanted to have a free form even though I cut one side I'm just going to tear this other side and glue it in place and then go back and trim off the excess So now that the bodice is done, I'm just checking again, see how placement is going to look once I start adding the skirt of the dress. And I'm just pulling out pieces that have a nice variety of color. And I like the ones with the speckled paint on them. So these are the ones I'm going to work with. Some of them are too wide, so I'm just going to tear them down. Similar to what I did in the Juneteenth video where I used the faux rice paper, which was actually a napkin. I'll link to that in the iCard up above as well. So as you can see, I'm just tearing the thicker pieces in half. I'm not doing all of them that way, just some of them. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering the strips to build her dress. And I'm gonna speed this up because it is a little time consuming. So I didn't want to bore you with this long process. So here I'm just adding the final touches to the dress with adding a few more 
of the scrap pieces. And I'm going to add a waist or a tie at the waist. Not a tie, I don't know. A band at the waist. I don't know what you call it. I'm not a fashion person <laughs> or dressmaker. I just felt like it needed something. It needed something to define the waist a little more. And I also need something to cover the scrap pieces, the edges of the scrap pieces at the waist. So here I'm just trying to smooth out the crinkled papers of the skirt. And I'm going to use glue to hold some of those in place. I didn't want to glue every strip completely down, but I am gluing down the ones that were just curled and not manageable. <laughs> So now I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this piece of doily from the scrap pile behind her. And here I'm going in filling in some of the empty spaces in her skirts. Here I have a bag of scrap die cuts and other pieces that I have either cut with my Cricut or a Silhouette and that have not yet been used of course and i'm just trying out different things to see what will look good with this layout i also have these white die cuts they are from a tim holtz die i think they're wildflowers and these were left over from another project as well they're a little beat up but they can still be used and here i'm playing around with butterflies on her dress seeing which butterflies i like best which look so I've decided on the elements that I want to add. I'm going to use these bluish and whitish butterflies and I'm going to take the same marker and go around the edge so that you don't see the white core on the edge. I could again use ink for this but I just did not want to deal with the ink. So I have the marker right here. I'll use the marker. And I also have these three paper flowers. I think they're from Prima Marketing. I've had them in my stash for years. I'm slowly dwindling them down. They were in a tube and I had quite a few. It's a variety of flowers. So I pulled these three black flowers from that bunch and I'm using those. And this teeny tiny white one will be the center of the middle flower. Now I'm going to go ahead and start gluing down the butterflies. And I'm gluing down the white wildflower it's a little tricky because, like I said, they're a little worse for wear. <laughs> and here I'm just placing it on the page carefully. And one thing I need to keep in mind while I'm doing this, because it is going to be on disc, is that I need to allow for the punch. But you'll see what I do in this case. So I'm just mopping up any excess glue that seeped out. And here my doily was already starting to stick to her. Um, and since it's going behind her anyway, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. So I'm trying out this other wildflower die cut and it looks fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the glue and put it in place. And then just to add a little more color to the background, I have this washi tape from 
Lauren Phelps designs. I'm really in love with their washi tape. <laughs> I think I'll be shopping there a little bit more. I was confused the first time I tried to buy some of their washi tape. It just didn't make sense to me how it was set up. But I caught a live stream recently and it kind of made more sense to me what was going on on the website. So I was able to get a few rolls of the new release. But yes, I am really enjoying this washi tape from Lauren Phelps Designs. It's perfect for not only planning or adding to your planner, it's great for collage and things like this. And this particular row has a rainbow of florals on it, so it's perfect for this page. And I'm just tearing down to get the size that I need and adding glue stick to it because it is washi tape. So I want it to I want to make sure that it sticks well, so I add glue stick to it. So here I'm going to add some more Lauren Phelps designs. This is the same washi tape I think that I used on the cover. Um, I have two rows that are similar. So, but yeah, I'm just tearing off the hard edges, adding some glue stick and putting it in place because this is where I'm going to put my prompt. So I'm building an area for the background of the prompt. Again, testing her positioning on the page. So here I'm going to cut a piece of this scrap black cardstock and I'm going to use this for the prompt. And instead of trying to stamp out the word, I'm just going to use this white jelly roll pen and write out the prompt, which is reinvent. Then I'm just going to go back and darken the downstrokes. And I'm going to cut off the excess and go ahead and glue it in place on the background. So now it's time to glue down my focal point. And I'm just going to tear off a little bit of the dress that's hanging over the edge. I don't mind it hanging off the edge, but I just didn't want too much hanging out. So on the side there, I took some of that off glued down some of the other pieces that were still sticking up and I'm going to tear off what's hanging off uh, at the bottom. And then I decided to add a little bling, kick it up a notch. So I'm just testing to see which color I like and I'm going to go with this multicolored clear um, bling. It's a little large, but I think it'll be fine. So I'm just going to use it. Again, a lot of this stuff I've had in my stash for years and it needs to be used. So I'm going to use some for centers in the flowers and then some on her dress as well. And then I try one in the butterfly. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to leave the butterflies alone and just sprinkle the gems around her dress instead of trying to put them as butterfly centers. And 
then I realize that her arm is not completely glued down. So I go in and add some glue to make sure she stays put. Then I'm going to use the arc punch to punch and put it into the journal. And this is where I make my mistake. I got all the way to this point to realize that I punched the wrong side of the paper. It probably wouldn't have worked very well on the other side anyway because I had elements too close to the edge on the reinvent size side, but begin was supposed to be the first page, then reinvent. So I messed that up royally, but there's nothing I can do. About, well, I could do something about it, but I decided against it. It's all part of the process. It's part of learning. I needed to pay more attention to what I was doing. So I'll just have to live with it. So I may come back and put another cover page on this maybe, but I don't know. The reinvent page is a kind of a nice cover page. So that is it for the first two prompts for Junk Journal July. I'll put all the information I can in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed seeing this process. If you did, you may enjoy these other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.